This lesson is for learning targets 11 and 12, light dependent reaction and Calvin cycle. The chloroplast is where photosynthesis takes place. This is an organelle that is located in plant cells. Chloroplasts have their own DNA, they have their own ribosomes, and they have a double membrane, which suggests that at one time they were their own organism. This is the endosymbiosis theory that we discussed uh, in our evolution unit, so you should be familiar with that again. Chloroplasts have several distinctive uh, features as far as their anatomy is concerned. So this is a chloroplast, and inside the chloroplast there are these stacks that look about like this or so. And each one of these stacks is called a thylakoid. Thylakoids are one of the most important structures, obviously, in the plant. Thylakoids uh, is where the thylakoid membrane is where the light dependent reaction takes place. So this is a very important structure. There are lots of discs inside a plant or inside a chloroplast. And this is because it increases the surface area of work that can be done, thus increasing, increasing the efficiency of the plant. A stack of these thylakoids is called a granum, or grana for plural. The inside of the thylakoid membrane is called the lumen. And the lumen is a space that we will mention. It's uh, where a concentration gradient is built up in a moment. We'll talk about that. And the space inside the chloroplast that doesn't have anything to do with thylakoids is called the stroma. And the stroma is where the light independent reaction or the Calvin cycle takes place. So both reactions of photosynthesis take place inside of the chloroplast that they take place inside different structures in the chloroplast. So we'll begin talking about the light dependent reaction. A few important things before we go on to mention the light dependent reaction is a very involved process, but if you understand that the goal of this process is to create these two molecules, ATP and NADPH, that will help you tremendously. Uh, those two molecules represent potential energy for the plant cell. They are able to do work. They are energy that has been captured from the sunlight, which was to here. All right. A plant cannot take sunlight directly and do anything with it. It can't consume light. It, it doesn't speak in light terms. So it needs to do something that it or needs to convert that energy into into a substance that it recognizes, which is chemicals. An organism is basically a bunch of chemical reactions. And so this light is converted into chemical energy by the pigments located on the thylakoid membrane. And so again, the ATP and ADPH are extremely important for the light dependent reaction. If you get nothing else from this, make sure that you understand that those are happening. H2O is fed into the reaction in order to keep the reaction going, which we'll discuss in a moment. And O2 is a byproduct of the reaction. Just a real quick overview on ATP and NADPH. ATP is energy currency in the cell and the cell uses ATP to do a myriad of different reactions and functions inside the cell. And so ATP is going to be created in this process in order to do something like that. Uh, NADPH is specifically an electron carrier and it's an electron carrier in that the high energy electrons that come from magnesium, if you remember my magnesium color, 
Magnesium, remember, has two electrons in its outer shell, and magnesium readily lets go of those and becomes an ion and readily lets go of those two electrons. Well, those two electrons are excited. They're full of energy, and NADPH works to capture those electrons so that the cell can do something with the energy from those electrons. So NADPH, ATP, the main goal of this light-dependent reaction. So for the light-dependent reaction, we're going to draw a picture of the thylakoid membrane. And on the thylakoid membrane, we have some photosystems. We'll leave a space or two for those. We also have a protein called ATP synthase, and we'll leave a space for it as well. So this is our thylakoid membrane. Remember, the, the membranes inside the cell are very similar to the one that surrounds the cell. Here is a photosystem. Here is a photosystem. And then ATP synthase has an, a, a strange shape, but it's a functional shape. Photosystem 2 is first. Photosystem 1 was discovered before photosystem 2, so that's why it's... Um, that's why photosystem 2 is, is first, and photosystem 1 is here. Photosystem 2 was discovered later, so it got its name later, um, and those names don't usually change. So photosystem 2, photosystem 1, and then this molecule here is called ATP synthase. The name tells you what it does. ASE, anytime you see ASE, there's, it's an enzyme. The C-Y-N-T-H, synth, anytime you see that prefix, it has to do with making something like the word synthesis that we use quite often. So this is an enzyme that makes, what does it make? Well, it's called ATP synthase, so it makes ATP. We'll get to that in a moment. Photosystem 1 and Photosystem 2 have a particular job, and their job is to capture the light from the sun, which we'll use lightning to demonstrate lightning or light and that's coming from the sun and light is being captured on these photosystems well magnesium remember is on these photosystems as well and magnesium is excited by the presence of light and so when magnesium gets hit by the light the two electrons that it readily loses are lost into the so two electrons go into this area called the electron trans, transport chain, ETC for short, electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain is a chain of small proteins, and so it's a chain and it's a place where electrons are transported, and those electrons will literally be passed from one protein to the next. We'll talk about that in a moment. So if magnesium were to lose these two electrons and never get them back, this reaction would not occur, so we, we need a, a way to replenish those electrons, and that is where water comes in. So here we have H2O, and H2O is also hit by the sunlight, and the bonds in H2O react to being hit by the sunlight by splitting up. Well, just a real quick aside, H2O is split up into three parts. If you remember, H is made up of two parts itself. It's a very simple atom, and it's made of, one, a hydrogen, a, a hydrogen ion, and two, an electron. Now, oftentimes, I will talk about hydrogen ions and I will also I will use the term proton interchangeably because a hydrogen ion is nothing more than a proton. And then an electron, obviously, there are no neutrons in hydrogen. And so if you have two of those, as we do in H2O, we have two hydrogen ions, two electrons, and an oxygen. 
So if we go back to our picture, those two electrons, it's easy to see where they're going to go. They're going to go to replace the ones that magnesium lost. And so the reason that we water our plants, the reason that plants want water is because they need this replenishment of electrons that happens here on photosystem two. Oxygen is at this point given off as a waste product. Oxygen is given off as a waste product and will no longer be used by the cell. Uh, oxygen, as you know, plants exhale oxygen. Well, we inhale oxygen, so this is how the oxygen of the world comes to be. We depend on plants in order to get our oxygen. And left over, we have a couple of hydrogen ions, which we'll discuss where they're going to be going in a few minutes. So, water is split up on the surface of photosystem 2. Oxygen is lost as a waste product. The two electrons move into the spot where they were in magnesium, and they continue to cycle through magnesium as those two electrons then will enter into the electron transport chain later. And then the two hydrogen ions are left here on the, or in the, this area of the cell, which I haven't labeled yet. The area above is the stroma. And then here in the inside is the lumen of the thylakoid. That, that's important in a moment. So, electrons travel across the through the electron transport chain, and as they do that, remember, so these electrons are high energy, and as they do that, they are passing, they're passing these high energy electrons, these different protons, and as they are proteins, as they do that, they are powering a reaction that sends those hydrogen ions against a concentration gradient. If you remember, we talked about concentration gradients in the first section of this unit. And when we go against the concentration gradient, it requires energy because that's called active transport. And so we are building a concentration gradient here in the lumen of the thylakoid, which will eventually be able to, or will allow us to use that for some sort of work in the cell, which we'll get to in a second. And so we're building the concentration gradient. Now, those electrons that are passing through the electron transport chain lose energy as they pass or pass from one protein to the next. And so they need to be recharged in order to be used again by the cell. Well, at photosystem one, they are going to be recharged. They're recharged by the light that is also striking photosystem one. And so at this point, the plant is going to take them up for use. And again, remember we talked about the electron carriers. Well, this is where they come into play. We have our friend NADP plus that's coming from the Calvin cycle. It's been used up and it's going to scoop up those two electrons and turn to NADPH and it is headed off to the Calvin cycle at this point. So that's one of the molecules that we need to make for the light dependent reaction was NADPH. How do we make ATP? Well, we have a molecule called ATP synthase here, and that's how that's going to happen. This concentration gradient that is here is building up. And remember, molecules will move naturally from an area of high concentration, which we have down here, to an area of low concentration, which we have up here. And since these are charged particles, these are ions, they cannot pass across the membrane of this thylakoid on their own. So they need assistance. They need they need that diffusion facilitated. We've talked about facilitated diffusion. That is diffusion with the use of a protein channel. Well, ATP synthase works as that protein channel. But ATP synthase is not just a normal protein channel. When the pro, when a proton passes across ATP synthase, it causes ATP synthase to spin around. Now, think about this as a windmill. A farmer doesn't build a windmill for any reason. The farmer builds a windmill in order to do some work. And how is he able to do work using a windmill? Well, the wind blows the actual windmill 
and down inside the building, it turns some sort of crank. Maybe it's grinding wheat or pulling up water from a well or creating electricity. There's lots of things that can be done using the power of the wind. And it's not the wind that's doing the work. The wind is causing mechanical energy, which is in turn doing the work. So in this case, as the proton passes through ATP synthase, it causes that ATP synthase molecule to spin around, which creates mechanical energy. And we can use that mechanical energy to take an ADP and a phosphate and make an ATP. Remember we talked about ATP and we said that when it loses that third phosphate, it needs to have it placed back on very similar to as like how we would load a spring or like a Nerf gun with a spring or a rubber band. And so energy needs to be applied in order to reset that. Well, energy is applied from the spinning of ATP synthase and that third phosphate is placed back on to ADP, when, which ADP just came from the Calvin cycle. And now ATP is going right back to the Calvin cycle. So what do we have as a summary? The reactants for this light dependent reaction are water. Remember water is necessary in order to keep this reaction going. And then we also have NAD plus and ADP. They have come straight from the Calvin cycle. They've been used up and our products, oxygen as a waste product is given off and NADPH and ATP, which are our, our important products, and they are going on to the Calvin cycle in order to be used.